mighty voice, the wind, a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, let the nation sing. Now rejoicing, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. together heavenly father once again we thank you for this wonderful news that jesus is still saving oh god we bless your name for bringing us out tonight and for those on the platforms oh god we pray that your spirit will rain down upon us and may we express gratitude to you in surrendering everything give us obedient hearts we pray in Jesus' name, let God's children say, Amen and Amen. Amen and Amen. Let me say good evening to everybody. I am not hearing you. Good evening, everybody. Are you happy to be alive? Has God been good to you? Did you have a good day today? Are you looking forward to come back tomorrow? Amen and Amen. Turn to your neighbor. Let your neighbor know you're already blessed because you're sitting beside me. Let your neighbor know. Put a smile on your neighbor's face. Let your neighbor know you're already blessed because you're sitting beside me. Amen and amen. It's good to see you. I trust that you had a good day today. Anybody had a bad day today? A really, really, really bad day and you thought that you did, wasn't going to be here tonight? Anybody? Everybody has a good day. Praise God. Praise God indeed. Let me just share something with you that is critically important. We have a registration desk. And so each evening you come, you must seek to register. Register at the registration desk and each evening we are going to select a number of persons who register and give them special prize. Mm? So register. Each even you come, make sure you do what? Register. And as you are coming, don't forget to bring a friend. And if you can't bring a friend, let a friend bring you. But make sure you invite somebody. Extend the invitation that somebody should come and receive a blessing. Amen, somebody? Amen, indeed. I'm glad you're here tonight because I want to invite you back for tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, you cannot afford to miss tomorrow night. As a matter of fact, if there was any night you should miss, it should be tonight. But since you're here tonight, you can't afford to miss tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, the subject will be expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. And when you're planning to come, Please bring a, and if you can't bring a friend, you got it. You got it. This evening, the subject, as was announced, message from outer space. Bow your heads with me. Lift your heart heavenward as we talk to God in prayer. Once again, O oh God. We are happy that you are never tired of hearing your children pray. We are thankful that you don't only hear our prayers, but you answer our prayer. Thank you, God, for your words that we can open unmolestedly. Please, we pray that you will speak to our hearts. Allow the power of your words to transform lives tonight. May I be the nail that hangs the picture of Jesus. That as he is seen, heard, and lifted up, we all will be drawn closer to him, we pray 
In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Message from outer space. Let's go to the slide. Message from outer space. On August 17, 1977, in Delaware, Delaware, Ohio, research from Ohio State University detected a 72-second radio signal. This wasn't an ordinary signal. They were convinced that the signal originates somewhere from around the constellation Sagittarius. This was excitement in the scientific community. So excited that they dubbed this signal the wow signal. Next slide. They dubbed it the wow signal. Yeah, I was, quick, was quickly dubbed the wow signal since this discovery, speculation run rampant that it was a message from where? Extraterrestrial intelligence. This was a message they believe and it was coded and, and that's the code they, they, they decipher and believe that this was a message from outer space. Now they, they, they thought about this for a very long time and, and, and 35 years after they received that message in 20. 12, uh, the, uh, the Ariba Observatory and the National Geographic Channel decide to send back a response. They got a message and so they, they gather up videos and tweets and different messages and decided to send them to respond to the original message uh, 35 years uh, before, the message that stood out was a message from the comedian Stephen Colbert. Read with me and get excited. Stephen Colbert's message to the supposedly extraterrestrial being from outer space was this. He said, greetings on behalf of all the people of the earth. We are not delicious. In fact... We are kind of gamey and we stuck in your teeth. This was allegedly trying to discourage the, the extraterrestrial being from coming to have the people of earth for their supper. The truth is mankind has been enamored. Mankind has, has invested so much to know what is out there. To the extent uh, that oftentimes they neglect what is here. Billions and billions have been spend in, spent in discovery for, to find out what is out there in space. While people are starving. People are living in very, very bad situation. But we want to know the unknown. We are caught up. We want to know the things that is, seems to be mysterious. But I'd like to share with us this evening that we have already received a wonderful message from outer space. We have received a message and most of mankind have ignored that message. And that's the message that we need. Because this message from outer space that we receive is not just for information, it is for transformation. The message that comes to us it's not for us to ignore. It's for us to receive, adapt, and to live out in our daily life. Can somebody say amen? 
Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4 and ver reading from verse 8. Next slide, please. 1 John chapter 4, reading from verse 8. The word says, He who does not love, does not what? For why, 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 why? For God is, in this was the love of God manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten into the, that we might do what? That we might do what, somebody? That we might live through him. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that whatever message that we may receive from any extraterrestrial intelligence, it cannot be more important than this message because men are dying in sin and we need life and we need to live abundant life. Can somebody say amen? And so this message is a crucial message. The verse 10 says, in this is love, not that we do what, but that he what? And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. This message that we receive from another planet is the love message. And this message is saying to us that the person that this message originates from, he loves us. Can somebody say man? He loves us. And so therefore, number one, understand, ladies and gentlemen, that this message is a love message. It's a love message. Love, therefore, in the passage in the Bible, is set as an attribute of God. In other words, if you don't love, it means you don't know God. That's the word of God. And when you look around in the community, look around in Jamaica, we know that love is lacking. Am I speaking to somebody? Because if there was much love, there'd be less killing. Am I speaking to somebody? If there was much love, there'd be less confusion. If there was much love, there'd be less quarreling. If there was much love, there'd be less fighting. And so I believe, according to the word of God, that what we receive from God is relevant. We need love. We need love. Now, some Christian see God as an angry tyrant. People who are not Christian consider God to be so. And so they believe that we have to calm God down. Have you ever spoken to anybody like that? Because things are happening bad and maybe God is angry. But a loving God, or a rather an angry God, would not send his son to die for undeserving people. Mm. I, I got to say this again. I said an angry God would not send his son to die for undeserving people. It ought to be a loving God. He sent his son and this was done in the past but we are still feeling the effect at present and we are going to feel the effect in the future. This is an awesome love. And so the love that was extended that Christ the son of God was sacrificed. And understand me, some people read the text to say God sent the son and they believe the son did not have a choice in the matter. But let me clarify that Jesus came to die voluntarily. Didn't have to be forced to die. He was the offering because sin demands debt. But here is the beautiful love. Jesus took what we deserve. Come on somebody. Everybody, every one of us deserve to die. Because the Bible said that the wages of sin is... But Jesus took the debt that we deserve, that we can receive the life that he deserves. Somebody ought to praise God tonight. Herein is love, the Bible says. 
This is the best definition of love. John here was turning to the highest possible illustration to describe the immeasurable love of God for mankind. Somebody ought to praise God tonight. We will not understand everything about God. Are you hearing me somebody? We cannot know everything about God. As a matter of fact, if we would know everything about God, we would be God. But God reveals to us what we need to know. Can somebody say amen? And so we can know God because God is love. But understand me, one word alone cannot describe God. You didn't hear what I said. I said one word alone cannot describe God. God is more than love. God is forgiving. Can somebody say amen? God is caring. God is patient. He's long-suffering. God is awesome in all his ways. And so he send a message. And I believe that this message is good news. And when you have good news, you don't keep it to yourself. Talk to me, somebody. You got to let somebody know that is good news. But today, more people are more excited to spread bad news rather than good news. Have you ever seen some people excited to come to you? I can't wait to tell you. And they, they're just going, I, oh, listen, 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 listen. And you get excited, ready to hear, thinking it's something good. And then they tell you and you get disappointed. People are more excited to spread bad news. But those who come in contact with the greatest lover, those who know the love of God, is excited to spread good news, to tell somebody, if you should see the way I was before I let him in, if he did it for me, he can do it for you. We ought to be excited to spread good news and therefore this message from outer space is a message of love about a God of love and his desire to love humanity. But in a day and age when we have so much misinformation and so much disinformation people get skeptical when you talk about love isn't that true yes people get skeptical some people get so skeptical that if you talk and you express genuine love they start questioning your motive they want to know if you're real because somebody in the past has said the same thing and take this advantage of. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? Somebody has said it but did not mean it and they take advantage of somebody. But I'm here to let somebody know that the God says he loves us. He doesn't want anything from us. He's God all by himself. Whether we love him or not, he's still God. We need him to be somebody, but he's God all by himself. People ask the question and question the authority of the Bible. They said, I don't believe the Bible because men wrote it. You heard that before, don't you? Who should write it? Animal? Huh? Robot? I don't believe the Bible because men wrote it. Yet, beloved, we are living in a world that is so sinful and dangerous. We ought to accept the good news that the Bible brings. This message cannot come from earth. You hear me, somebody? It cannot come from earth. It has to come from another place. Because the message on earth is about bloodshed. Am I speaking to somebody? The message that we get from the newspaper and the television and the radio is about injustice. 
it's about cursing it's about revenge it's about shooting like they had recently in Spanish town it's about lust and lying it's about corruption it's about our take and immorality this message that God has given us it cannot come from earth and so somebody ought to know that God loves us so much he sent the message of love in a book of love it's called God's love letter can somebody say amen I want to give you a secret to, to understand and to interpret things that you're not able to understand. When people ask you, if God is love, why disaster take place? Because I'm sure people ask you that, doesn't they? Yes, if God is love, we, we cannot explain all the happenings in nature, but what we can seek to explain, that irrespective of what's happening in nature, God is still love. Young lady called me. She said, Pastor, I don't know you, you don't know me. I said, How can I help you? She said, I, I, I don't believe he existed. Who doesn't exist? She said, God. I said, Why do you come to that conclusion? She said, I've been praying to him because he said he loves me and he's not answering my prayer. And some people try to seek the existence of God, whether the prayer is answered or not. So if the prayer is answered, God exists. And if the prayer is not answered, then God does not exist. But can I tell you something, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that if God should answer everybody's prayer the way, the way they want it to be answered, most of us would be dead a long time. Because people are praying for us to die. Are you hearing me, somebody? Most of us will be dead a long time. But praise be to God, he's a loving God. Can somebody say amen? amen. Yes, everything about God is love. And you ask me, what is love? Love is a principle that guides our thoughts and actions. Love is essential to our well-being as human beings. That's why so many people are hoping and fighting and begging and even starving for love. Some people are waiting and singing, dressing, working, crying and dreaming for love. We need love. We need to know that somebody important loves us. Can you say amen? amen. We need to know that there, are, there is love and it existed. That's why people are dreaming. Some are watching demonstration of love. Some people hear about love and they speak eloquently about love, but they never experience love. We need love. Read all about love. Some people are so desperate for love that they look in strange and unexpected places. Because they need love. Some settle for lie and for loss because they can't find love. That's where we are. Love is so critical to our well-being as human beings. But the Bible, the Bible, the word of God reveal and demonstrate the ultimate lover and give us the love letter from the ultimate lover. Bible says, this is my commandment that you do what? Love one another. Understand, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that treating each other bad is not from God. If your neighbor treats you bad, it's not from God. If your boss treats you bad, it's not from God. If you get sick, it's not from God. If things don't work out as we plan, it's not from God. 
God is love. But sin bring problem. You didn't hear what I said. I said God is love. But sin cause problem. But in spite of sin, God still love the sinner. Hear the word of God. And next slide, next slide. If God is not love, listen to the text in John chapter 15 and verse 13. The text says, greater what? At no one than what? Than, uh, than to lay down one's life for his friend. Let me ask you, anybody here of a very, 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 very good friend, raise your hand. Maybe the person sitting beside you, so they expect you to raise their hand. But it's only a few people have good friends. Mercy. That's bad news. Maybe somebody, somebody's wondering, I don't know if the friend is good or bad. But true, true, sometimes people who are so-called good friends let us down. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. Yeah, man, sometimes they let us down. We, we thought that they were. And we, we, we invest in them. But they let us down. Not true. And so we find it difficult to invest in anybody else. Speak to somebody. Talk the truth. We find it difficult. And so when people come genuinely and do things, we are wondering about their ulterior motive. Where them up to? What's going on here? Yes, and, 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 and so if somebody is a close friend, not, don't use the word good friend, nice friend, really show themselves genuine. And they come to you, and you have an only child. And they say, my friend, I am going to die. And there's one way that can be stopped. Is to give your child life for mine. I can see some of you already pushing them through the door. You're mad? Come out of my yard. That can't work. It's not going to happen. Especially if they let you down before. Talk the truth. Some people that feel like the fact that they're going to die is God answering them prior. Talk to me. Talk the truth. Talk the truth. Shame the devil. Hmm? Yet, the Bible says, God, Jesus, Laid down his life for his friend. Mm? Who is the friend? It is the friend so important that you're going to lay down your life. You see, God doesn't just want us to know what love is all about. He demonstrates what true love is all about. Come on, somebody. So if you can't find true love on earth, it is reflected in the life of Jesus. God wants us to know what true love, so we can take our example from him. But beloved, because we have been let down, we feel like we can't trust anybody. Not only that, but some people with low self-esteem, People pick up on that low self-esteem and take advantage. Talk to me, somebody. Yes, some people believe that in order for them to, to be loved, they must do something. You have to prove your love. And I'm going to talk about that one day. But with God, God didn't ask us to prove he didn't ask us to prove our love. He proved. He proved his love. That's good news. 
he prove his love and he prove it in such a way to remind us that even though we may be unlovable he still loves us can I say to you in the highly emotional way someone loves you honey someone loves you and that ought to build your self esteem that ought to remind you that we are not forgotten that ought to tell us that even though some people look down on us somebody special loves us that should put some pep in our step mm? to know that somebody so important so special the creator of this vast universe loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us and we don't have to do anything extraordinary to receive the love of God can somebody say amen we don't have to do anything extraordinary but I want you to know because love is so powerful the enemy tried to distort and to bring confusion when it comes to love when it comes to the word of God the enemy tried to bring us confusion to tell us that we can't trust the Bible but they can trust any other book confuse us when it comes to the situation we want to be love and true love listen to me somebody true love is not about what is said true love is willing to make sacrifice mm? true love is about making sacrifice but the letter that is sent it gathers dust because people neglect it. People adore it, but fail to read it. People, if you ask most people in Jamaica, they have the Bible at home, not true? Yes, most people have a Bible and they reverence it and respect it so much that they're not about to read it. And when life is a mess, when you are looking for the answer, dust is growing on the answer. When you're looking for a way out, dust gather on it. And God is saying, read my love letter. But for many people, instead of reading God's love letter, they listen to the opinion of people. And they form an opinion about the Bible. Some have never read it, but they can speak eloquently what, why they don't believe it. Mm. Understand, the Bible is God's love letter. But did you know that no other book has been so loved like the Bible? Mm -mm. At the same time, no other book has been so hated as the Bible. People have died for the Bible. Others have killed for it. It has inspired men's greatest act. And it has been blamed for man's most degenerate behavior, the Bible. There is an attack against the Bible. But understand, amidst the attack against the Bible, it is still the number one bestseller. Because it's not just another book. It's God's love letter. It's God's revelation about the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who's the Savior of the world. Understand me, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that the Bible, why it is hated so much is probably because it reveals God and it exposes humanity. Mm -hmm. 
it exposes the plan of the devil it exposes our predicament and remind us that we don't have the answer but Jesus is the answer the Bible presents us as lost and estranged from God and it reveals Jesus as the one who finds us and brings us back to God. That's why the, the, the verse said in Psalms 119, next slide please. The verse said in very clear Psalms 119, 105, your word is a what somebody? A lamp to my feet and a what somebody? A light unto my path. Many of us here were walking in darkness. But when we come upon the word of God, it enlightens our dark soul. And we can walk like we've been to university. Because God has taught us in his word. Many dumb people, dunce people who were once nobody. But now we are somebody because we find the word of God. The only book that can change our lives is not about information. It's about transformation. Let me tell you the two extreme that the Bible takes us. It reveals man's evil condition. Yes, nobody likes to be exposed, isn't that right? But the Bible reveals our evil condition. Another extreme is that the Bible reveals God's incredible love for us. Would you say amen? amen? That's why the theme of the Bible is Jesus. Theme of the Bible, probably, next slide please. The most famous verse in the Bible, Simona. John 3, 16. Even people who never been to church know John 3, Isn't that true? Yes, man. For God saw what somebody? That he did what somebody? His only begotten son that whosoever what? Believe in him should not what? But have somebody? Is that good news or good news? Is that good news or good news? God so loved the world. He loved us with an everlasting love. Because and therefore he wants us to know that he loves us. We are special. He sent his son. If you weren't special, he wouldn't send his son to die for you. But because we are special, we are the object of God's love. He sent Jesus to die. The text. For God so loved the world. You got to put your name in it. You hear me somebody? Put your name. Take out Patterson and put your name in it. Call your name. So when I say for God so love, I want you to call your name. Everybody. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? For God so love. Yes, for God so loved Robert. You see, once Robert was unlovable. Robert didn't thought that anybody could love him. But for God so loved Robert that he gave his only begotten son. Because he doesn't want Robert to perish. But to have what somebody everlasting life God so love God so love God so love me he so love you and he wants us to live with him forever God so love and let me tell you you may think some people have gone too far but God loves cover all humanity can somebody praise God to me his love covers all humanity. No matter where we've been, no matter what we have done, God still loves us. Come on, somebody. He doesn't love the sin, but he loves the what? He doesn't love the sin, but he loves the what? That's why it is critical to understand God's love. Because there are some righteous people who not only hate the sin, but there are some righteous people who hate the sinner. Hmm? Not true. Yes, man, there's some righteous people. And in order for them to show that they're righteous, they show more how much they hate the sinner. 
Mm? And sometimes the, the righteous cloak in sin are just demonstrating uh, because they want somebody to look on them as righteous. Uh, but when you want to look at somebody who is righteous, look upon Jesus. Uh, sinless is he. Father impute his life unto me. I said look to Jesus. Uh, he's our perfect example because men will fail and men may fail but Jesus, uh, he never fails. Hallelujah. Hallelujah we got to look to him because he has life and a promise to give us abundant life in him hear what the Bible said Romans 5 verse 8 for God does what demonstrate his love towards us in that while we were what while we were what somebody who died for us I told you some people wouldn't die for you if you're righteous, much less being a sinner. They wouldn't die for you. You tell them to give up a kidney for you, they're ready to kill you. But when it comes to God, he demonstrates his love towards us. In other words, the Bible is saying long before we were born, God loved us. Come on, somebody. He know that we'd messed up, but he still. He still loves us while some people doesn't. But can I tell you, if you're living in a situation where people say they don't love you, you got to turn to them and let them know that I am love with an everlasting love. The greatest lover loves me. If you don't love me, it's all right. But Jesus loves me. This I know. So John, John says, behold, look, take note of what manner of love the Father has what? Bestowed on us that we should be called what somebody? That we should be called what somebody? Children of God. Can you imagine messed up? over and over again yet God changed our status oh I wish somebody would get excited I said messed up mistake over and over again but God loved us so much he changed our status that we are called the sons and the daughters the children of God if you believe that you ought to raise your hand and say hallelujah to the Lamb of God he loves us so much he changed our status I tell you this if some people know what we did last week and what we're going to do next week they wouldn't want to love you but God knows what we're going to do next week yet yet he still loves us somebody ought to praise God with me tonight let's go to the next verse the next slide the next slide the next slide now now you you doubt the scripture some people why is it I don't like it but it says I'm in a scripture it's given by what inspiration of God inspiration mean God breathe God breathe God breathe inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good works I tell you something you see some of us driving nice car wearing nice clothes living nice house all because God love us come on somebody some of us before we come to church we were nobody mm? but we came to church and we become Sabbath school superintendent we become pastors we become a deacon we become teachers we become elders and we start walking like we're walking in water but, but when you know that God loves you whether you're a deacon or not you still walk on water whether you have a title or not you still walk and water it's not the position that keeps you it's the love of God that keeps us 
It's the love of God that keeps us. And so God said, go to the scripture. All scripture. The Old Testament and the... All scripture. But some people downplayed in Old Testament. You know that? But when Jesus was on earth, he used the Old Testament. Come on, somebody. He used the Old Testament. So we've got to use all scripture. So when you want to know right from wrong, we go to how many scripture? All scripture. All of it. My sister usually tell me about a man. Just checking if I have more time. I have about a hour. Not going to take it though so you can relax. Thank you. My sister told me about a man. This man couldn't read. There's an expression in Jamaica. They say if the name is on a bulla. Why am I doing it? He eat it. He couldn't read at all. But he gave his life to Jesus. And somehow miraculously... He start reading the Bible. People think that he memorized it. But he didn't memorize it. God gave him supernatural intelligence. Come on somebody. You see, that's why when it comes to the word of God, we've got to understand that it came from God. It came from God, not from man. Next slide. For the prophecy never came by what? Go back to this one. Go back to this one. Peter, let's go back to Peter. For the prophecy never came by what? But holy men of God did what somebody? Spake as they were what? Moved by the Holy Ghost. And so the author behind the Bible is the Holy Ghost. Can somebody say amen? And can I tell you that God never make a mistake? If you find a mistake, it's your understanding. God never make a mistake. If you want to know the truth, you got to turn to the word of God. Because the Holy Ghost moved upon men who were fishermen. Men who were doctor, Different profession. And gave them holy intelligence. And so the Bible, the Bible is God moving upon men. And so men put it in the language that you and I can understand understand are we together somebody they wrote it in the language that we can understand went in the shop lady says to the lady around the counter here is one of them as I went in the shop here is one of them I said one of who she said one of the gullible Christian she said gullible but you're a nice guy. But Christian gullible bad. So why do you say that? Why do you have against the Bible? She said, well, a white man write it. To trick black people. You hear it before, don't you? You probably didn't hear this experience. A white man write it. A man write it to trick us. Hmm? Hmm? But... If somebody can trick you to live right, trick me. If somebody can trick you to walk right, just trick me. If somebody can trick you to live a better life, trick me. If somebody can trick you to stop killing, then trick me. And I think Jamaica need to be tricked by the Bible. Trick me if it's going to change my life for the better trick me she said well you you can't accept what it says because men wrote it and when i look at her she had a newspaper under her arm i, I said to her what is that under your arm she said a newspaper i said you read it often she said every day every day Mister, Mister, i said who wrote it she said nobody draw my tongue nobody draw my tongue because people read the newspaper don't they religiously they read the newspaper they read the newspaper and a man write it eh? but the newspaper news yesterday's news is stale news but the bible news is always good news yesterday's news is old news but the bible news is good news that's why we have to throw away the bible the newspaper so often because I steal news, we start using it to mop up water. Not true? Yes, man, because I steal news. But the Bible.
Bible, we read it and it gives us good news. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jeremiah 31 says, The Lord had appeared of old to me, saying, What did he say? I have loved you with a what? Everlasting love, therefore, with loving kindness. I have drawn you. You see, I am glad that God doesn't force anybody, aren't you? I am glad. I am glad. It doesn't force anybody. It gives us the evidence that we can make a decision. Not true. It doesn't force us. Some things true we can't understand. And we pray and we struggle. But can I tell you a secret? Can I tell you? I'm just going to tell you. Then I listen, but may I tell you? Even if you don't know everything, you can still go to heaven. They were listening. Even if you don't know everything, you can still make it to heaven. Hmm? Hmm? You can still make Let's go to hear the slide. For whatsoever things were written of before were written for our what? That we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have what somebody? Hope. My hope is built on what? Nothing less but Jesus' blood and his what? Righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name. The song says on Christ the what? Solid rock I stand. All other ground is what? Sink and stand. Are you glad that we can stand on the word of God? The word of God can stand the test of time. For whatsoever thing were written before time, a long time ago, it is still relevant today. Can somebody say it? Amen. It is still, next slide please. It's still relevant today. Next slide please. So what we got to do? What we got to do? What, we, what should we do? Study. Study. Study to show thyself approved unto who? Unto God. Study. Study. Study for your study. Because the devil is so deceiving that if you don't study he will trick you study for yourself if the preacher preach it under the tent and you want to check it out after check it out study study to know God's word for yourself the bible does not provide a map for life only a compass to guide us in the right way. This is the way. Walk ye in it. That's what the word of God says. But when you walk in the word of God. You will meet upon enemies. Because some people love you as you are. But when you're going to obey the word of God. They tell you Ch don't change. Stay as you are. But when you walk in the word of God. God defend you. Come on somebody. God takes care of you. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. The Bible says, in vain, in vain they worship me, teaching for doctrine, huh? the commandment of what? Men. The thing that we need to hold on to, to stand on, is the word of Almighty God. Man will tell you one thing today and tomorrow then change it. Tell you something else. But when you read the Bible, the same message all the time. Come on, somebody. And it is so mysterious. It's so mysterious that have you ever read a text and you examine the text? You look, I look at all the things in the text and you think you understand the text. And then the next day you read the same text and you start seeing something as it is. It's completely new. That's the mystery of the word of God. But the word of God brings us down to this. A new commandment I give to you. That you love one another. As I have what? That you also love one another. By this all will know. That what? You are my disciple. If you have love for one another. This love is mysterious. We can only get this love when we come in contact 
with the greatest lover. Come on, somebody. Can't manufacture this love. You cannot manufacture it. But I want to show you a few references of people in very high states says about the Bible as I come down. Abraham Lincoln. Anybody ever hear that name before? Yes. He said, I am profitably engaged in reading what? I believe the Bible is the best gift God has given to man. All the good from the Savior of the world is communicated to us. Through what somebody? Through the book. Somebody ought to say amen. The next slide please. Next slide. David Livingstone. You ought to hear about it. He said, all that I am, I hold to Jesus Christ revealed to me in what? Divine book. Which is the divine book? the bible next slide please martin luther said god's word of itself is pure clean bright and what somebody clear next slide please dwight moody said the bible is the only news book in the world the newspaper tell us what has taken place the bible tell us somebody ought to praise god with me tonight what will take place oh isaac newton said we account the scripture of god to be the most sublime philosophy i find more sure mark of authenticity in the bible than in any profane history whatsoever somebody ought to say amen theodore roosevelt and this is the last one i plead for a closer and a wider and a deeper study of the Bible so that our people may be in fact as well as in theory be doers of the word and not hearers only. Oh, brothers and sisters, that's deep, isn't it? It's deep because many want to be doers of the word but are challenged. Hmm? The, the, the Jamaican saying is the art is what? The heart is what? But what? But what? Flesh is weak. Many people want to be doers, but the flesh is weak. But Paul tells us, I can do, come on somebody, all things through what? Christ, who does what? Strengthens me. I got to close. I got to close. I got to close. I got to close now. I wish we could go on until 7 tomorrow, but I got to close. Question is, who need love? Anybody here need love? I'm raising my hand. I'm raising my hand. Mm. The love letter, you're raising two hands? Amen. The love letter tells us who need love. It tells us the greatest lover. Now, what happened, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen? Knowing the word of God is good. Knowing the Bible is God's word is good. Obeying the word of God is better. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. It's better. Some of us, we've made up our mind. I want to obey the word of God, but sometimes it's difficult. But the lover is available to give us the power. I want the church to stand. Stand if you're saying, I need love. If you're saying, I want to be loved. I want to feel the love of God. I want to experience God's love. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. But is there anybody here who need love? Not yet accepted the love of God and surrendered their lives to him. Anybody here who need that love, just raise your hand. I'm going to ask my Bible counselor to come and, and get, give you a card. My Bible counselor is going, to, is going to give you some cards. I want you to write up these cards and we are going to be praying for you as we close. I want you, my Bible counselor, some folks are over this side, some folks are over this side. You've got to raise your hand that they can see you and come towards you. You need this love. Some folks are over this side. Some folks are over this side. Just raise your hand that they can see you. Raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. Give them a pen, give them the card. Give them the pen, come my sister. Give them the pen and give them the card. Let, let they can make that 
accept that love accept that love accept that love give them a pen and give them the card take the card and take a pen you, you, you have not yet accept that love. You have not yet allowed the love of God to transform your lives. And you want to say, I want to make a decision because I want the love of God in my heart tonight. Tonight, write your name and write your details on it and tick the box and make a decision. You don't want to come to hear about God's love. You want to leave with the love of God in your heart. Write up that card. You've not yet accepted that love. Maybe you've accepted that love a long time ago and you strayed from that love. And tonight you're reminded of the love of God and you want to say, you know what? I want to come back and receive that love tonight. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand that the Bible counselor can see your hand and give you a card. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Write that card up make your decision for heaven as we close as we close as we close make your decision is mm. great that's right